Grace and peace to you this day. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you to worship this morning, uh, to say a very special word of welcome to those who may be visiting with us today, and of course always to our East Link congregation. We are glad to know that you are with us in spirit. We have a guest book in the uh, narthex of our church and invite any who may be visiting with us to record your time there. If you'd like to learn more about the work and ministries of this congregation, please feel free to be in touch. Following worship today, we have a time of conversation and refreshments in the lower hall to which all are invited. The sympathies of our congregation are extended this morning to Joyce Barber and to her son Gary on the passing of Joyce's husband, Merrill. Our prayers and our hearts are with you both this day, and we will continue to enfold you in the days to come. A number of birthday wishes to Helen Newsom, Marvin McDonald, Lori Ann McDonald, Claire Gidney, who celebrate on March 27th, and to Shirley G. McDonald, who celebrates on March 30th. We extend happy birthday wishes to each of these folks. I wish to thank those who are offering leadership in our worship this morning, beginning with Kay Linkletter, Kay, and all of the bell ringers who are with us today. We've already been graced by your music and look forward to another piece a little later in the service. Welcome to worship today. To Adere and Rory Laird, who will be our candle lighters today. And this morning, you'll notice our candles are up here, so I'll be inviting you to come right up here onto this area with me when it's time to light the candles. To Judy Irwin, who will be leading us in the reading of Scripture. To Mariko Osa, who is our soloist this morning. And a warm welcome back to Dawn, who's been away with family for vacation. We're glad to have you back on the bench today. few announcements to highlight from our bulletin. Lenten Bible study will continue on Tuesdays at 1.30 in the chapel, and all are invited. Sign-up sheets for scripture readers can be found uh, to my left back here in the children's area. There's a table with a sign that says readers, and there are still some Sundays left between now and I think the end of May. So if you haven't signed up or you'd like to read twice, please make your way to those sign-up sheets following worship. Please note also that a week from this morning following worship, all will be in, uh, invited to remain here in the sanctuary for our time of coffee and pie and the viewing of a 15-minute video celebrating Affirming Pie Day. Details are in your bulletin, and Val uh, spoke to this recently here in worship. So please plan to stay, uh, and we hope we will all be together for the viewing of that uh, video. And an announcement from Norman this morning. Good morning. The monthly Tuesday night church supper is on Tuesday, April 2nd, a week from this Tuesday, in the church gym at 6 p.m. The guest speaker will be Helena Emini, a native of Iran, who now lives here in Charlottetown and works with the immigration people. She will speak about Iran's culture and her immigration journey to Prince Edward Island. Tickets are $10 each and will be on sale after the church service at the Richmond Street entrance. They are also available from the church office during the week, and everyone is welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Norman. I should know by now to really scan the congregation before I do a welcome. But having done that while Norman was speaking, though I was listening, Norman, I do see that dear friends uh, from gosh, my teen years, are here this morning. I want to welcome Kay and Dave Richardson and their son, uh, Reverend Dr. Andrew Richardson and his spouse, Janet, to our worship this morning. It's uh, lovely to have you here, so welcome. 
Let us continue now with the lighting of our candles, and I invite Rory and Adere to come forward. We've got Rory and Gary, and come on forward. Hi, we'll start with the white candle, the Christ candle. We light the Christ candle this morning as we make our way on this Lenten journey. May the light of Christ guide us on our way. And honoring the beautiful diversity in our world, each person an expression of love divine, we light the rainbow candle. As we gather to worship, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Abiquit Mi'kmaq First Nation. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. In a moment of quiet, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Everyone who thirsts, come to the water. Even if you have no money, come, buy, and eat. When we are parched, we come to be refreshed. When we are hungry, we come to be refreshed. Hearing God's call to feast and to be filled, let us all come that we may be renewed.
As one voice, let us pray together. Ever welcoming God, you assure us that there is a place for all in your loving embrace. May we lean into that tender care, confident and trusting. Remind us anew that your way is full of compassion and create in us a new heart. Our next hymn is found in Voices United at number 282 and also on our screens. I invite us to join together in the singing of verses 1 to 3 and to remain seated for the singing of this hymn. During the second and third verses, all of the children who are here this morning are invited to make your way to the front for our time together. Good morning. Good to have you up here this morning. If there are any other children that want to join us, we'd love to have you. Have you had a good week? You've been off from school this week, right? Yeah? What? I was so afraid on Friday. A marshmallow fest. That sounds wonderful. A fight. A fight and a fest. Marshmallow dodgeball. That sounds good too. Oh my 
goodness. But there was one seat that wasn't repaired, but the marshmallow got Oh, okay. It was all of the little kids. Right. The phones and marshmallows at the big kids. Wow. But the big kids. You weren't allowed. Okay. Well, well, here's what I want to know. First of all, I'm glad you've had a good week. Secondly, in the midst of your week, maybe we can ask them after church. We could get more details. Yeah. What I'm wondering is, in the middle of your marshmallow games and your time off from school, do you remember what we agreed would be our challenge last week? Anybody remember what our challenge word was last week? Oh, that looks great. The first week we did generosity, and we were challenged to do an act of generosity. And you're right. You're right, Elsa. Gratitude was our word last week. That was our challenge word. And we challenged ourselves in the week that has passed. We said, let's try to remember to say thank you to someone that we might not normally think to thank. And then let's maybe as families make a gratitude list each day and try to write down three things. Now, we have one confession here from Elsa that she forgot to do that. How many of us forgot to do that? Let's be honest. Put a hand up if you forgot. How about if you remember to thank someone at least one time this week? Put your hand up. One time. Did anyone remember to do the actual gratitude list? Put a hand up. Oh, I'm seeing a few shy people putting their hands up. But that's great. That's great. Well, this week we have another challenge. And the word for this week, I'll give you a hint. Mel's away with her family, but she left this for our symbol. And next week we'll put this on the communion table. What do you think our word might be? Something that... Sharing's a good guess. Caring's a good guess. Giving's a great guess. Loving is another great guess. Hmm. When do we put our hands like this? Sometimes. Hugging? Mm, how about this? Let's do this. Praying. Praying. So our word this week is prayer. And actually all the words you suggested can be part of the prayer that each of us can say this week. Maybe we can ask God to help us be loving and caring and sharing. What were the other words you said? To give hugs. Thanksgiving, we can give God thanks. So this week, our challenge is to remember to say a prayer each day. Okay? And here's the extra challenge if you want a double challenge. Sometime this week, I invite each one of us to say a prayer for someone who's been mean to us. Maybe it's someone on the schoolyard, or maybe it's someone in our family, or maybe it's a friend. But let's challenge ourselves this week to say a prayer for that person, a prayer that perhaps their hearts will be opened and they will be kinder to us, and a prayer for ourselves that we can receive their kindness if it comes our way. All right? So prayer for today, and let's have a prayer, and I'll invite everyone to join us before you go off to Sunday school. Let's pray. God of love, God of love. thank you for prayer. Thank you for prayer. For a time to open our hearts, to ask for your help, and to share our love. Amen. Have a great morning.
Let us pray. Holy One, prepare our hearts to receive your word. Quiet us, quiet in us any voice but your own, that we may hear your will for us today. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Let us listen for a word from God. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may have life. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I have made of you to be a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the nations. See, you shall call nations that you do not know and nations that do not know you shall run to you. For the sake of God, the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek me, God, while I may still be found. Call upon me while I am near. Let the corrupt abandon their ways, the evil their thoughts. Let them return to God, and I will have mercy on them. Return to God, for I will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says God. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. Amen. Please join me in the responsive reading of Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8 found in Voices United on page 781 and on the screens. We will sing refrain two. You are my God. I long for you from early morning. My whole being desires you like a dry, worn, waterless land. My soul thirsts for you. In the sanctuary, let me see how mighty are your works. Your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. I will give thanks as long as I live. I raise my hands in prayer. My soul will feast and be filled, and I will sing and praise you. As I lie in bed, I remember you, O God. I think of you all night long, for you are my constant help shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. I cling to you, your hand keeps me safe. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, 
I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig round it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down.
Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be faithful to your holy word, O God. Amen. Yesterday morning at 11 o'clock, Hundreds of islanders gathered at the cenotaph here in Charlottetown. Imam Mutaba Mulvi and Al Hadi Abusnina, the president of the Muslim Society of Prince Edward Island, greeted us in the name of peace. On a cool, gray, drizzly day, they led us in a remembrance of our Muslim kin those who were massacred just over a week ago while at prayer in the Al Nur and Linwood mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. Elected officials spoke of their commitment to creating safety for our diverse island population. They called us all to participate in that endeavor. A member of the Jewish community conveyed love and support and solidarity with our Muslim kin. A professor from UPEI shared her deep sadness and delivered an impassioned indictment of white supremacy, a system on which our nation was built and from which so much violence in our world continues to find its impulse. But nothing moved me more than the humility and the warmth, the gentleness and the strength of Imam Mujtaba and President Al-Hadi, who not only welcomed us in the name of peace, but thanked us over and again as the vigil ended for having come. Huddled among the members of our own congregation, friends in faith, and complete strangers, I finally wept the tears that had been building all week. Even though I have mostly fasted from the news, the images of broken bodies and the voices of shattered lives in Christchurch, New Zealand, that I have seen and heard were almost more than my heart could bear. How do we begin to fathom the terror and the sorrow? How do we begin to comprehend the devastation and despair? How do we continue to breathe, really, in a world that is home to such hatred? In the company of Jesus, I found myself in recent days silently crying out with his followers of old. They have just received the news that Galileans, a humble, peaceful, prayerful people, have been massacred in the temple in Jerusalem. Their blood, Pilate, mingled with their sacrifices, Luke writes. In the wake of this news, Jesus intuits what his followers are thinking, what his followers are thinking in an effort to make some kind of sense out of that which is senseless. Desperate to find some kind of order in the midst of violent chaos. Searching for some kind of cause and effect that might give them some even false sense of control. Jesus intuits what his followers are thinking, and he asks, Do you think these Galileans suffered in this way because they were worse sinners than other Galileans? And then he answers his own question, No. 
No, but unless you repent, you will perish as they did. No, but unless you repent, you will perish as they did. In the wake of unspeakable violence and inflicted suffering on a prayerful people, what was Jesus saying to the followers of his day? In the wake of unspeakable violence and inflicted suffering on a prayerful people, what is Jesus saying to us this day? The theme of repentance weaves its way through the Gospel of Luke. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia, and metanoia has a very particular meaning in the New Testament. Though we often associate repentance with regret or remorse over something we have done or something we have failed to do, Metanoia in this context means a conversion of one's heart, a change of one's mind, and a new way of perceiving the world and living in it. Jesus is speaking to a crowd of people who are taken with his teachings, yet still miss the sacred substance of them. Jesus is trying to get through to those who wish to align themselves with his holy proclamation, yet fail to understand the urgency of it. Jesus is pleading with all those who yearn for safety and salvation to recognize the inbreaking of God's realm here and now. If you are taken with the teachings of peace, embody them, he says. If you wish to align yourselves with holy proclamation, live always in love. If you yearn for safety and salvation here on earth, open yourselves to God's presence and promise and be transformed. Repent. For if your hearts are not made new, if your minds are not changed, you will perish as they did. Huddled among the members of our own congregation, friends in faith and complete strangers, I finally wept the tears that had been building all week. Even though I have mostly fasted from the news, the images of broken bodies and voices of shattered lives in Christchurch, New Zealand, that I have seen and heard, were almost more than my heart could bear. How do we begin to fathom the terror and the sorrow? How do we begin to comprehend the devastation and despair? How do we continue to breathe, really, in a world that is home to such hatred? Perhaps Jesus is speaking to us. We who are taken with his teachings, yet still by times miss the sacred substance of them. Perhaps Jesus is trying to get through to us, we who wish to align ourselves with his holy proclamation, yet fail to understand by times the urgency of it. Perhaps Jesus is pleading with us, we who yearn for safety and salvation, to recognize the inbreaking of God's realm moment by moment here. And now, perhaps he is saying to us, if you are taken with the teachings of peace, embody them. If you wish to align yourselves with holy proclamation, live always in love. 
If you yearn for safety and salvation here on earth, open yourselves to God's presence and promise and be transformed. In other words, repent. Repent. Open your hearts to be made new. Open your minds to be transformed and embrace a new way of perceiving the world and living in it. For if you don't, there will be no life in you. It will be as though you too have perished. Yesterday morning, at 11 o'clock, hundreds of islanders gathered at the Cenotaph here in Charlottetown. Imam Mujtaba Mulvi and al Hadi Abusnina, the president of the Muslim Society of Prince Edward Island, greeted us. They greeted us in the name of peace. On a cool, gray, drizzly day, they led us in remembrance of our Muslim kin, those who were massacred while at prayer in the mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. Elected officials spoke of their commitment to creating safety for our diverse island population. They called us all to participate in that endeavor. A member of the Jewish community conveyed love and support and solidarity with his Muslim kin. And a professor from UPEI shared her deep sadness and delivered an impassioned indictment of white supremacy, a system on which our nation was built and from which so much violence in our world continues to find its impulse. But nothing moved me more than the humility and the warmth, the gentleness and the strength of Imam Mujtaba and President al Haidi, who not only welcomed us in the name of peace, but thanked us over and again as the vigil ended for our having come. And my heart was made new. And I suspect the hearts of many. And my mind was transformed. And I suspect the minds of many. And my perception of the world and the way I will choose to live in it has changed. And I suspect the perceptions of many and the ways they will choose to live have changed too. And it is a beautiful and an expansive thing. And it is wildly terrifying. Whenever God graces us with repentance, with a deeper knowledge of our oneness with God and our oneness with each other, across lines of religion and ethnicity, of age and ability, of sexual orientation and gender expression, of education and income, Whenever God graces us with repentance, with a deeper understanding of our oneness with God and our oneness with all creation, earth and sky, air and sea, fish and our four-legged friends, whenever God graces us with repentance, with a deeper experience of God's realm here and now, God immerses us ever more deeply into the fullness and the capacity of our own souls. And it is a beautiful and expansive thing. And it is wildly terrifying. 
Whenever God graces us with repentance, whenever God graces us with a deeper knowledge of our oneness with God and our oneness with each other and with all of creation, whenever God graces us with repentance, with a deeper experience of God's realm here and now, God calls us ever more deeply onto the paths of justice and reconciliation and love. And it is a beautiful and an expansive thing. And it is wildly terrifying. What will be asked of us? What new thing will we be called to do? What new way will we be called to be? To what new place will we be called to venture? And how on earth will we begin? David White a philosopher poet of English and Irish descent, one who is intimately acquainted with such questions and such a call, with the graces of repentance, gives us sage counsel for the journey. White writes, Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first step. Thing, close in, the step you don't want to take. Start with the ground you know, the pale ground beneath your feet, your own way of starting the conversation. Start with your own question. To find another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until that voice becomes a private ear listening to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble. Be focused. Start close in. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing. Close in. The step you don't want to take. What will be asked of us? What new thing will we be called to do? What new way will we be called to be? To what new place will we be called to venture? Start close in. Let us at least begin. And may the God of the prophet and of parable, the host of an abundant feast, and the gardener who nourishes the tree that it might bear fruit, nourish us on our way. May it be so. Amen.
Let us give as we are able. Let us give as we are called. Our morning offering will be received. Oh God, we ask that you receive the gifts of our hearts and hands this day. Bless them and bless us that together we might be a blessing in your world. Amen. Let us pray. God of prophet and of parable, whose spirit moved over the waters at the dawn of creation, hear our prayers for all who thirst this day. We pray for those who are thirsty in spirit, who long to know your presence. We pray for those who are without hope, who are searching for meaning and purpose. God of prophet and of parable, pour down your waters and heal your people. We pray for those who are thirsty in body, who don't have clean water to drink. 
We remember especially this day our First Nations kin and all those laboring in the aftermath of the cyclone in Mozambique and Mal Ma Malawi and Zimbabwe. God of prophet and of parable, pour down your waters and heal your people. We pray for those who are thirsty for justice, who long for an equal sharing of resources among peoples and nations. We pray for those who grieve and rage and seek to forgive in the wake of violence of every kind. God of prophet and of parable, pour down your waters and heal your people. God, we ask that you open our hearts and transform our minds and lead us in your way. Give us courage to work together for justice so that all people everywhere may live without want or fear and may be nourished by your living water and your abundant love. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world with the daring and tender love, for the world is waiting. Let us go in peace. And may the grace, love, and communion of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 